how do you define half? So how to define half path still remains quite challenging. There's no single gold standard diagnostic test. And so various definitions have been used across different guidelines, clinical trials, outcome-based studies. This is a little bit all over the place. Most recently, um, the universal definition of heart failure has been adopted. And that really defines HEFS test as the presence of the clinical syndrome of heart failure that's caused by structural or functional cardiac abnormalities with an LV ejection fraction greater or equal to 50%. And what we want to see is that um, this is corroborated by some objective evidence, either the presence of elevated nitrogen peptides or other evidence of congestion. Okay. So it sounds a little bit more nuanced than if I just have a patient who clinically looks volume overloaded and their EF is greater than 50%. I can't just automatically label that patient as HEFPAF. So how would you approach a patient like that? That's a great question. So I would say if you have somebody who has the clinical syndrome of heart failure, their jugular venous pressure is elevated, they're short of breath when they walk around, and you do an echo and their EF is greater or equal to 50%, I would still label that as HEFPAF. Now, something that comes up a lot in terms of diagnostic workup is that there are things that can look like HEFPEF that we call HEFPEF masqueraders that can cause heart failure with normal ejection fraction. And so it's really important to try to identify and differentiate HEFPEF masqueraders for what I call garden variety HEFPEF because the management is often really different. So for example, people with restrictive cardiomyopathy can present with heart failure and a preserved ejection fraction. Of course, we know that there it's important for us to for example, evaluate for amyloid and other causes when the clinical suspicion is high. And the treatment would be really different from the sort of garden variety HEFPEF. So it sounds like amyloid is one of these HEFPEF masqueraders. Would you be able to walk us through some of these other HEFPEF masqueraders? Yeah, absolutely. This is sort of where I think some of our clinical intuition can really be so helpful some tip-offs come with your careful clinical exam and history. So, for example, if you find on physical exam, someone has a Kussmaul's um, sign, which is uh, an indicator of decreased RB compliance, I would say that's really not typical of garden variety HEFPEF and should prompt further evaluation for something that's involving the RB in addition to the LB. Um, and so broadly, I guess, how can we think of HEFPEF masqueraders? I think of them as several different buckets. So there are people who have some other primary cardiomyopathy. That could be a restrictive cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. There are people who can present with high output heart failure in the setting of some systemic disease like anemia, hyperthyroidism, cirrhosis. And then there are people that have some primary other cardiac abnormality that can cause them to present in heart failure, including valvular heart disease, coronary disease, or even pericardial disease. So those are sort of broadly the HEFPEF masqueraders. I, on that note, why is it important to understand if it's a masquerader or not? Maybe you can go through the specifics of why it would be important to think through that. Absolutely. So I think we have more and more evolving therapies for specific conditions that fall under this grab basket of HEFPEF masqueraders. So, for example, we know people with cardiac amyloidosis may benefit from medications that prevent further deposition and may actually change the trajectory of their disease process. Similarly, if somebody has half pass in the setting of severe aortic stenosis, well, of course, we know that we should really focus on whether we can address the valvulopathy as the underlying cause and then potentially really change their clinical trajectory. We want to identify potentially treatable conditions that might be treated very differently from garden variety HEFPEF and sort of this concept of guideline-directed medical therapy. 